Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I am unboxing my new electric excavator. Just got it in from China, well I ordered it several months ago and it just arrived and now I'm excited to open it with you guys. Let's check it out. plywood collection. All right, there's a stick and the smallest excavator bucket you've ever seen. <laughs> Didn't realize that was the last bolt. Oh man, we're getting closer. Whew, I'm getting excited. Yeah, I love when they use these self-tapping screws into a steel cage. Oh, there she is. Man, that is a small excavator. <laughs> Got the wire on the boom here. <laughs> Yang Gong. This is my favorite brain. <laughs> All right, so that's free. You can see where some of the wires that were supporting this is broke right through. So I think the best way to get this out is going to be to take the front off, cut this bar here, and drive it out. I think we'll have to cut the top ones too so I don't get decapitated on the way out. Or I can just drive it out like this. Actually, maybe I should back it out because I only have to cut one bar here on the back. I think the stop piece is free. Ooh. Watch out. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's see. Got a key switch here. Oh, let's start with the battery. Turning the key. I got lights back here. Good sign. So it's 100% charge, 0 0.9 hours. Someone was playing around on my excavator. The bucket is hard down on this, so move the bucket to your right a little bit and then lift it ever so slightly. All right, let's see what happens. I'm gonna try and swing it a little to the right. Nothing is happening. Also, I don't hear the uh, hydraulic motor yeah. for one thing. Yeah, it can't be that quiet. Oh, probably here. There we go. All right. Now lift it up. Yeah. So the question is whether they have it set up in SAE or ISO. A little more. Stop there. Just, you got to get the teeth disengaged from the roll cage. That's good. Keep going. Man, this thing is quiet. Not the fastest ride. <laughs> Throw that up there. Somehow I missed catching the canopy installation on camera, but we just bolted it on and it was fairly uneventful. Next came time to test out the controls. All right, so this should be the uh, dozer blade here. And so it seems that they set it up for SAE, but with the boom backwards, because I think the left stick forward should be boom down, but it's boom up, which is kind of confusing. Like you generally push it the direction you want the boom to go. Yeah, see, so this one is set up correctly for SAE. And this is backwards. Man, this is really quiet. Not very fast, but it's not meant to be. We could try picking up a log there. For the record, if things are a bit shaky, these are my first couple minutes on the machine ever, so I'm still getting a feel for the sensitivity of the controls. It's backwards. Also, the fact that the left stick was plumbed backwards is super confusing, so I'm gonna address that soon too. For my second attempt, I tried to get fancy and stack one log on top of another. Ah. <laughs> You're disgustingly much too proud of yourself. <laughs> 
Next it was my dad's turn to play around on the machine, and it turned out he was starting to draw quite an audience. I guess that's an indication of how quiet it is. It doesn't bother the cranes. Good morning, birds. Got a new friend in the neighborhood. Man, those things are massive. Yeah, we gotta switch that around. I had originally asked the factory to set it up SAE style, despite them normally using ISO controls, since the machine is mostly used in Asia and Europe. But they got the SAE controls backwards on the left joystick when they set it up for me, meaning we had to open it up and reverse them ourselves. While we were in there though, I made the decision to switch to ISO controls, largely for two reasons. One, despite SAE controls being somewhat more common in North America, there are still more machines made with ISO controls, though many large excavators can switch at the flip of a switch between the two. But more importantly, and secondly, ISO actually makes more sense if you also use loaders, since the right joystick basically mimics the same movements as the main joystick on a loader, with forward and backward controlling the boom up and down, and left and right controlling the bucket curling and dumping. So if you're like us and you end up going back and forth between a loader and an excavator a lot, it just makes more sense that the right hand stick does the same movements. To accomplish that here, I made a game plan for swapping the hoses around to get the right ISO layout and make sure I wasn't getting confused by all of the hoses coming in here, and it was actually surprisingly easy to do. Once we had it all buttoned up, we checked for leaks and it was much nicer to operate this way. which means I can finally start the real testing, which is using it as an actual excavator. All right, this is gonna be my first try at digging here. Already gonna head off the uh, YouTube commenters and critics that give me crap for this, but I've never actually dug with an excavator before. So, uh, cut me a little slack here on my first try. I believe we're supposed to put the uh, blade down. First bucket. And examine my hole. <laughs> I think that went pretty well for my first hole. A couple times I got the direction wrong, but uh, <laughs> like I felt like it was actually doing kind of what I intended. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, you took stuff from here and you put it here, creating a hole. So that was the plan. Good plan, well executed. So, uh, what do you think about looking in your first hole? It's a nice hole. I feel like it's a little more scoopy than I was hoping for. A couple hundred hours of this, you'll get good. Welcome to what they call dirt here in South Florida. <laughs> you wanna give digging a try? Yeah, I'll give digging a try. So we managed to dig a hole and not hurt ourselves, so that's a good start. But digging a hole is pretty easy. Filling it in, that might be a bit trickier. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, not bad. 
I mean, not super pretty either, but we're not exactly getting paid by the hour here. So now I want to try a little trenching with the excavator. It's got the uh, 40 centimeter bucket on, I think it's about 16 inches. So I'm going to swap it over to a half size bucket. This is about an eight inch bucket, which I think will work better for trenching. Uh, it seems like we just need a 10 millimeter wrench here because the way they have the pin set up, there's no manual or hydraulic quick hitch, but just pulling out these 10 millimeter bolts or remove that plate. And hopefully this won't be too much of a hassle to get this bucket swapped out. All right, we got that eight inch trenching bucket on now. Time to go uh, dig a trench. We're gonna dig about a hundred foot trench or so. My dad's got this irrigation thing set up so he can capture rainwater. And uh, they're gonna use that rainwater for the raised beds. And also they're starting a, a whole tree farm thing. So they're gonna have, they already have fig. They're gonna be planting mango, avocado. Uh, my mom wants a bunch of citrus fruit trees. So it's gonna be a lot of trees back there. So this uh, irrigation system is gonna run to all of that buried under the ground. But first we gotta dig this trench. Now my dad had started this trench uh, a few weeks ago. It's grown in a bit already. Um, he started with a shovel, which obviously is a lot harder than using an excavator. And with 100 or so feet, I think it's gonna be a lot better to do it this way. Now you may notice I've got the mechanical thumb on there. I probably should have moved it back one position to be more open and out of the way, or just taken it off entirely while I wasn't using it here. But I found it didn't really get in the way too much, so I just left it there for now. So I've got about, uh, I don't know, 60, 70 feet of this trench dug so far. And one of the things that I'm really noticing is just how quiet the machine is. And it's really just so impressive because, you know, if you were out here with a, a gas or diesel powered machine, you know, just from an aspect of safety, if someone's yelling at you or something like that, it'd be hard to hear. But, you know, most of what you're hearing here, it's just the hydraulic sounds, right? It's all these hydraulic rams working. And there's just so little noise coming from the machine. Even when it's, you know, walking back like this, it is just so quiet. It really makes it kind of enjoyable to do this work without having to listen to the exhaust the whole time. So don't tell my dad I said this, but this is actually kind of fun. <laughs> Having dug a bunch of trenches by hand, this is a much more fun way to do it. <laughs> I think that does it. So I've dug a little over 100 feet of trench so far. It took me about uh, a little over 45 minutes of, of digging, I think. It was a little over an hour total, but you know, setting up cameras, uh, pulling out the drone, and it even took me a little while in the beginning to sort of get the hang of it. This is the first trench I've ever dug with an excavator. But I would say that you know the rate I went was probably three to four times faster than if I had had to dig it by hand. And the other thing is I feel fine now you know like if i had dug this whole thing by hand it would have taken me most of the afternoon and i would be super tired right now i feel like i could go play a game of basketball no problem and i'm also not going to wake up tomorrow super sore so there are other advantages here than just the speed and the power it just it makes it so much easier and you know it was kind of fun Now I mentioned that thumb, and it's actually quite useful. It's not a hydraulic thumb, it's manual, so you have to fix it at whatever position you want between the three available pin locations. But I found that the middle position seems to still give you good grip abilities while staying out of the way for most digging, as long as you're not doing like a full extended reach of the boom while digging. But where it really comes in handy is for picking up all sorts of things, such as logs, rocks, branches, etc.
As we were using the machine, we started taking another look at that crate the excavator came in and realized that since it was already actually built out of such good thick steel tubing, it might make an interesting little garage structure to store the machine in. The only problem was that it had shipped disassembled, so we had to start doing some modifications on the cage so that it'd be big enough to fit the machine with the canopy installed. Fortunately, we were able to make use of some extra steel we had lying around from one of my other weird purchases in the last few months, and that just meant we had to get a little custom to make this thing bigger. Now the plywood here obviously doesn't look great, but it's just to give it some basic structure, and then the plan is to go over it with a couple layers of tarps to make it more watertight against the rains. Yeah, I've got to add some more tarps to it, but you get the idea. Plus, it's a lot better than my first plan. All right, now I've had the excavator for a few days now, and I should give you a walk around and show you how this thing works. So first, let's go over the controls here. As you saw for walking it, it's just these two levers here in the middle. You can push them together forwards or backwards to go forwards or backwards, or you can do just one to turn or both at the same time to sort of tank steer. The problem with the tank steer is it starts to tear up the turf under you. The uh, control levers here, if you're familiar with a uh, micro excavator, you'll already be familiar with these, or I guess they're the same on the big boys as well. The uh, right one here, it's set up an ISO. That's gonna move the boom out and then back up. The left one, if I go forwards and backwards, it's gonna move the stick, the extended part of the arm there out, and pulling it back towards me, moves it back towards me. The left stick, if I go left and right, that moves the entire cab, just like this. And then on the right stick, if I curl it towards me, that curls the bucket. If I move it to the right, that extends the bucket out and dumps it. I also have this cool feature where on the left stick, if I push this button in and I move the stick to the side, instead of moving the whole cab, it swivels just the boom here. And that's nice if you're up against something and you want to, you know, dig right up against a wall or something, you can move just the boom and not the entire cab. Let's get in a little bit closer. I haven't used it that much out here because it's a big, nice open space, so I don't really need that feature as much. You can also hear how quiet this thing is. I mean, it's running right now and it is super quiet. I'll turn it off now and, you know, it's a little bit quieter, but just that motor running the hydraulic pump doesn't create that much noise. Down here, I've got a few buttons and switches. First is the main battery. There's an on and off position, but also a out position where the key actually comes right out of the machine. Next, I've got my lights here to run the working light. I'm not really using this at night, so I haven't really needed it yet. Uh, I've got my key here. It's one of these wide keys that protects it from water. Next, I've got the knob here that controls how fast the hydraulic pump is turning, the RPMs, and that just gives you more or less power through the hydraulic system. Lastly, I've got a digital readout here that gives me the hours the machine has worked, as well as the um, RPM speed of that hydraulic motor, and it also gives me my battery display. Moving around the machine a bit, this machine doesn't have the foot pedals that connect to the walking levers, which would be nice so you can drive it with your feet, but you know, you can't have everything in these small machines. Uh, the canopy and roll cage here is actually really sturdy. I mean, this feels solid. It does have a seatbelt, which you should wear. I've seen other videos point out that if you're not wearing your seatbelt, then doing a roll cage does no good because it just turns it into a guillotine. So make sure you put on the seatbelt. See the tracks here, these are rubber tracks. They're fairly darn thick. This is the uh, track tensioner here, which hopefully you don't have to mess with. Should just come set. Uh, over time, you might have to make some small adjustments, but you know, that seems to be fine for now. Uh, we've got the plow up here. The plow, it's, it's really more of a stability tool. You put it down when you're digging and it sort of increases your footprint, makes you a little more stable. These smaller machines are a bit tippier and they don't have that same big footprint that you have on larger excavators, so it does help a lot there. We have used it a little bit for actually sort of plowing, um, raking the dirt and trying to grade a little bit with it. it does work. It's not super effective. It takes a little while because it's just not a big plow. And as the you know entire machine moves up and down, so does the plow with it. So you know it's not perfect for grading. 
it does work though. Up here on the stick, you can see I've got this um, manual thumb here. It's basically a fixed rigid thumb. It's not hydraulic. There are accessory lines here, so I will probably want to swap this out for a hydraulic thumb so I can actually move that thumb independently and use it like a grabber. In the meantime, like you saw when I first got it out of the crate, I was able to still pick up log sections, even just using this fixed thumb. I'll probably want to move it into this outer position when not using it, just so it's out of the way. But even digging onto uh, flat ground, this wasn't really in the way so much in the middle position. So it does seem like a pretty good spot to have it if you're gonna have a fixed thumb here. My dad and I had spent a few good hours playing with the machine so far, and my mom also wanted to give it a try. So she hopped on up there for her first experience operating heavy machinery, or mini heavy machinery. I gave her a crash course in what the sticks do, and then walked her through the steps to dig her first bucket full. Do right hand forwards, right hand left, a little more, left hand back towards you. A little more, stop. All right, now the right hand to the left. A little more. All right, there you go. Now right hand back towards you. Nice, now right hand uh, to the right until it dumps out. You can just keep going. Nice, there's your first hole. Yeah. Now if you can do like 28 more, we can plant the tree. See, look how easy it was. Within two minutes, my mom was already digging. <laughs> now, if you're new to my channel, you might be wondering why electric? There are a ton of small, you know, hobby farm level gas and diesel mini and micro excavators out there, but that's not something that I wanted. There are just a number of advantages here. You know, there's obviously the environmental concerns. For some people, that's not gonna be the most important point, but it is something to consider. More directly for me, there are a lot of convenience advantages here. First of all, they're just cheaper to operate and run. You don't have to keep gas or diesel on hand. You don't have the maintenance concerns with a gas or diesel motor. You know, there are a ton of small parts that you need to be watching, swapping, things that can go wrong on gas and diesel engines. And with an electric motor, it's just so much simpler. There's one spinning electric motor in here. It has one moving part, a set of bearings, and that is it. There are not hundreds of interconnecting, moving wear parts on this machine that you have to deal with over time. Yeah, there is the maintenance related to the hydraulic system. You gotta check that hydraulic filter every now and again, change it every few hundred hours or so. That's maintenance that would go with either a, an electric or a diesel mini excavator. Other than that, there's nothing really related to the electric system that you have to worry about. Next, it's just so much quieter and nicer to operate, especially the small mini and micro excavators. Those diesel engines are loud, you know, they're disproportionately loud for such a small machine. There's also no enclosed cab on a lot of those small machines. It's just like this, it's open. So you got that exhaust literally a couple feet from your face and you're breathing in all of that stuff. And you know, that, that stuff is carcinogenic. It's really bad for you. It's not good to breathe that exhaust in. At least with a car, you've got that way out behind you. You're not worried about it as much here. You're literally a couple feet from the exhaust pipe on a diesel excavator. So to have this thing electric, not only is it quieter, you know, it's not vibrating, it's not smelly, it's not noisy, but it's just more convenient to use. To me, that makes a big difference. Yeah, you're probably not gonna be using this thing for hours and hours and hours on end unless you're using it, you know, commercially or something. But even if you were, that just makes those advantages even more important because they impact you even more. Now, if you saw one of my last videos where I brought in those electric loaders, you might already know about Nesher Equipment. It's a company I started to make these types of small electric construction equipment accessible in the US. Now, if you've seen what I've done here, you know, bringing these things in from China is not easy. There's a lot of risk associated with this. And I just thought that there had to be a better way to do this. This isn't even my first electric excavator I brought in from China. I brought another one before this. Unfortunately, it turned out to be something of a scam. I lost a lot of money on that. 
Um, I haven't edited up that video yet. At some point I might turn it into a video to show you guys just what happened and what went wrong. But needless to say, it was an unfortunate and even somewhat embarrassing experience for me because I kind of got screwed out of a lot of money trying to get an electric excavator from China. So long story short, I want to make these more accessible to people here in the US because they're such important machines. Like you can see, it's so effective. There are so many advantages here but it's basically impossible to find an electric excavator in the US. So that's the goal here. And so uh, if you go to nesherequipment.com, that's my website that I've set up. Uh, soon I am going to have electric mini excavators there. It's not gonna be this exact model. Uh, it'll probably be very similar. Uh, as usual, you guys know, lots of times I like to bring things in, test them out, work with the factories to improve them, make them a little more Americanized, make them better for US customers and US users. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here and I will have uh, electric mini excavators available there. So if you wanna check that out, head on over to nesherequipment.com and you can see what I've got for you there. In addition to my electric uh, mini loaders and some other stuff I'm adding to the side as well. Just some really cool electric uh, material handling, earth moving, mini construction equipment, that sort of thing. Machines that I think are very important, but just aren't available in the US, at least not yet. Now it's about time for me to charge this thing. The charger is a uh, pretty simple just runs off 110 volt. If you've ever had uh, an electric bicycle, it's, it's pretty similar, just a little bit bigger. Basically, got a long extension cord here. This just goes right into a 110 volt outlet. Plug that in, the charger's gonna light up. There we go. And I can plug this into the back of the unit. For what it's worth, I've put about four hours of usage on this so far, maybe a little bit less than that. Then it means you probably have about six to seven hours of work time per charge. All right, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in and watching this video with my mini electric excavator. Before you go though, it is time to give away a free e-bike. This is the e-bikes for good program. It's something I started at the end of all of my videos where I give away a free e-bike to someone who it will drastically improve their life, but they can't otherwise afford an electric bicycle. If that sounds like you, I want you to head on over to ebikeschool.com slash ebikes for good. The URL is down here at the bottom of the screen. I've got an entry form there. Just let me know your situation. Let me know what's going on and why an e-bike could really help improve your life. From the deserving entrance, one person will be the randomly selected winner of Electric XP Lite, one of my favorite budget-priced e-bikes. It's a nice and lightweight model, but it still offers 20 mile per hour speeds on throttle or pedal assist, and it's a simple single speed setup, so it's really easy to use. This bike is the epitome of bang for your buck. If you need a way to get around, it could be very good for you. So make sure you head on over to ebikeschool.com slash ebikes for good, and hopefully I'll be getting that e-bike out to you. Now it's time to announce the winner of the e-bike giveaway for my last video. And that randomly selected entrant is... Chris H, whose loving wife entered for him. Man, do you owe her, buddy. So congratulations. I am super excited to get that e-bike out to you. We've already been in touch. Uh, I usually contact the winners right before I post the next video like this one. So uh, if you want to be someone getting a call from me about a new e-bike that's going to be heading your way, then make sure you head on over to ebikeschool.com slash ebikes for good. Let me know what your situation is, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected winner at the end of my next video. Now the final last but not least, it is time to announce the randomly selected commenter who will be winning the book giveaway for my last video. And the winner is... Matthew Maniac. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You could choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. Anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, just put a comment down below this video. You could say anything you'd like, really, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. If you don't want to wait that long to hopefully win a free copy of one of my books, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you here next time. <laughs>